The Holy Spirit is for the thirsty, but deliverance is for the desperate. When we started this empowered series of messages a few weeks ago, I had this goal that I believe is from the Lord to stir up thirst in your heart for more of God, for his presence, for his power, for the Holy Spirit working in your life. We talked about the Holy Spirit empowers you for life. But there is an unseen evil enemy army that is literally hell-bent on trying to trip you up, discourage you, distract you, get you to fail or fall away from God. And so many times, as I talked about last week, last Sunday, we open doors in our lives uh, to, to interaction with demons. And we do that through sinning, through unforgiveness we hold in our heart, or through playing games with the devil. And if the door of your life is open, the thief is coming in because he's looking for an open door. So when he sees that open door, he comes in, he takes it, he takes that opportunity. I talked to you last Sunday about how even Christians can open up doors in our lives to demonic activity. Jesus taught Christians to pray this way. Our Father in heaven, and a little bit later in the prayer, he said to pray, and don't let us yield to temptation and deliver us or rescue us from the evil one. Jesus taught Christians to pray that. Jesus said in another place, deliverance is the children's bread. The children. We're the children. If you put your faith in Jesus, he, uh, God is your heavenly father. You are his, his child. Deliverance is the children's bread. The apostle Paul, who was thoroughly saved, wrote this in Romans 7. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. And he goes on and he tells the solution. Today, I want to talk to you about deliverance, part two. Yeah. Last week, I hope you saw last week's message. If you didn't, I encourage you to watch it online. Today's message, gonna be, we're going to have a little bit different format. At least that's the plan, if the Lord allows. And during the message, we'll take several times to just stop and pray. We'll even worship a little bit, sing a little bit, and then come back and, and just thread that through the message today because I just want to apply each point as, as it goes by so we don't lose it. And so we actually take action on the word. Uh, the word of God says that you're deceived if you're only a hearer of the word but not a doer of the word. And we don't want to be deceived. No deception here. Deception in that little circle, diagonal line. No deception here. Well, when you're talking about deliverance or freedom, first of all, you got to recognize your need for freedom yeah. or deliverance. Got to recognize your need. You, you can tell you need deliverance when you keep finding yourself over and over and over again paralyzed with fear. Because uh, uh, the, the, the paralysis of fear is not a hallmark of God's children. So there's something going on if just time after time after time you're paralyzed by fear. That's not from God. You can tell you need deliverance uh, when you keep gravitating toward what feels good even though you know it's harmful. That, that is an indicator of a need for deliverance. You can tell you need deliverance when you just can't seem to get well. No matter how hard you pray, you're just continually sick, your whole life just continually sick, one thing after another. Or when you're caught in a cycle of addiction, you know the cycle, fall, repent, repeat, fall, repent, repeat. Fall. That, when you're caught in that cycle, you, that is an indicator you are a candidate for deliverance from demonic activity in your life, from demonization in your life. Jesus said in John 8:34. Everyone, someone say everyone. everyone. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. We don't want no slaves today. There's not, there is no reason for that when Jesus has come to set us free. Yeah. Habitual sin is bondage. 
It's slavery. You can also fall into bondage to things like fear or pride or sickness or lust or darkness or weakness. There's a lot of different things that can just bind your life. Would you turn with me in the Bible to James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, 7. And this whole passage is good. This was in our, our reading, uh, our NFC Bible reading plan this past week. And I just, wow, God arrested me at the end of chapter 3, beginning of chapter 4. It's so good. You, you, so many times we try on our own and in our flesh to, to get freed up from things that bind us in our lives. You, you might have prayed and prayed and prayed for healing or prayed for confidence or prayed for purity or prayed to break off addiction, but it seems like it didn't work. So then, so then what? You start to think and try to figure it out on your own. You wonder if maybe you're not praying with enough faith or you're not praying with the right formula or the right way or you wonder if God isn't answering your prayer because you're not holy enough. Has anyone but me ever thought that? Well, maybe he didn't answer my prayer because I'm just not good enough or I'm not holy enough. Or you wonder if, well, maybe it's not really a spiritual issue that I'm praying about. Maybe I just need to be more self-disciplined or try harder. But what does God's word say in James 4, 7? So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So in the Bible, there are all kinds of different literature. There's wisdom literature, there's history, there's all kinds of different stuff. This is a command with a promise attached to it. You could say it's a conditional promise or it's a command with a promise attached. So humble yourselves before God. That means to submit to God's authority. It's to say, God, you're in charge. I'm not. You're the, you're the leader. I'm not. It's yeah. you. I submit. I, come, I bring my will under your will, Lord. Yeah. So humble yourselves before God. There's a command. There's a second command. Resist the devil. And that, that word resist, it just means to actively oppose the devil, his work in your life. Actively oppose it. There's another command. But here's a promise. And he will flee from you. And he will, oh, wait a minute. I guess the Bible says he might kind of, sort of, <laughs> maybe think about, no, that is not what it says. He will. So that means if you humble yourself before God, if you, if you submit yourself to God's authority, if you resist the devil, he will flee, period. Stand on that. We declare that. We agree with God's word. We don't, say, uh, we, we don't say, well, I hope he will. We say, he will. Amen. We say, I am submitted. I am resisting. The devil is fleeing. That is agreeing with God's word. That is yeah. declaring the word of God over your life. I, I'd wrap up this whole message in this next sentence. The way to stand strong is to submit to the Lord and resist the devil. Yeah. The way to stand strong is to submit to the Lord and resist the devil. And each of those are sort of implied, they're ongoing things. Right. The way to keep standing strong, the way to stand strong, stand strong, the way to keep standing strong is to keep submitting to the Lord, keep submitting, keep submitting, keep coming under his authority and keep resisting, keep resisting the devil. Right. So many times people are unaware of the devil's work. So they're not even resisting, they're not even trying because they don't even know he's out there working or working against them. Or so, so many times people are afraid of the devil. So they don't try to resist. Ah, who am I? Uh, and, and so that we will shrink back. Or, or, or they're just unaware of, of the, his strategies in our life. You may feel like you've resisted. You may feel like, uh, man, I've tried, but the temptation or the depression or the pride never left. So we've got to talk about this. Let's see what God's word says. Yeah. Ephesians 6.10, I'm going to rattle off a bunch of scriptures. Maybe just jot down the, uh, the address like this. Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's a little different than be strong in yourself, be strong in your thoughts, be strong, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 to 9 says this, stay alert. The world needs more alerts. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. 
He prowls around like a roaring lion. He is not the lion, but he prowls around like one, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. And what is your faith in? The Lord and in his mighty power. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. You have victory. It has been given to you from God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You have victory over sin and death. That's the truth. Declare that in your life. Romans 8.37 says this, Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. That is the word of God. And you know what I've been doing for the last two minutes? And actually longer, but really steady for the last two minutes? I have had out what God calls the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I've been poking holes in the devil's arguments. The devil's been telling you, you're defeated. You're too weak. You're not holy enough. Why even bother praying? Or he's been telling you, there's no devil. Guess who said that? The devil! And I'm taking the word of God and I'm poking holes in those lies. That is not true. The truth is what God says is true. That is the truth. And I align my life to his word whether or not i feel like it or it feels right it doesn't matter how i feel what matters is what is true and god's word is true i want to look at four r words oh you know i love alliteration four r's of freedom repent receive renounce renew and uh, if you didn't catch all those we're going to get them slowly one at a time so I, I want to talk about, first of all, this, just the, the, the baseline here, repent. What does repent mean? It means confess your sins to God, ask him to forgive you, and do a U-turn. So conf- repenting, confessing, you're, you're, you're going, God, I've been going my own way, and I've been doing this, I've been thinking that, I've been agreeing with the devil, whatever. I've been doing that. I confess it. I take ownership. I don't blame anyone else for it. I made those decisions. I, I did those things. I confess that to you. I ask you to forgive me. And now I'm not walking that way anymore. I took a U-turn. It's not even repentance until you U-turn. Yeah. That's right. It's not. It's just a nice thought. It's, what it really is is, Lord, I feel guilty. Please take away that feeling so that I can keep doing what I want without feeling guilty. That's not repentance. Repentance is that confessing it and turning the other way and walking towards God with his help. C.S. Lewis, a famous author, said this, and he's British, so you'll, you'll pick that up in this quote, but I love this. I think that many of us, when, that's my British voice, I don't know why it's higher than my regular voice. I think that many of us, when Christ has enabled us to overcome one or two sins that were an obvious nuisance, Many of us are inclined to feel that we are now good enough. It reminds me of our grandson, Theo. When he was about three, we said, uh, you think it's about time for a nap? He goes, no, I'm good. <laughs> and that's what we do. So when, when we, God's enabled us to overcome one or two sins that were bothering us, they were an obvious nuisance, we were inclined to think we're now good enough. He's done all we wanted him to do. And we should be quite obliged if he would now leave us alone, the Lord. But the question is not what we intended ourselves to be, but what he intended us to be when he made us. That's the real question, right? James chapter 5, verse 16 is in this context of uh, if you're going through struggles, call for the elders of the church and have them pray over you. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. There is something that happens through confession. Freedom comes from letting light in to dark places. Now, there is some, there's some wisdom in how you confess those sins. It doesn't necessarily have to be on social media, contrary to popular opinion. <laughs> you can just call a trusted spiritual friend or leader and confess privately and pray for one another. And the Bible says, and you will be healed. And that word is sozo. Saved, delivered, healed. That's what, that's what the word is there. Repent for your sins and for the sins of your ancestors. 
Now, why does the Bible instruct us to do this in Leviticus and other places? If, if, if someone in your family, if in your family tree that's, got, that's before you has already passed away, we don't repent for their sins for their forgiveness because it is too late. We, we all have this life to make our peace with God. But we can confess uh, to the sins, repay, uh, repent of the sins of, our, of ourselves and our ancestors in order to close doors of access in our lives. So I know that addiction's been handed down from generation to generation to generation, but we can just stop and we can say, Lord, we confess that our ancestors dabbled in this, that our, our ancestors brought this on them. But uh, Lord, today, I just confess that's not a part of my, my, my present or my future in you anymore, and I draw a line in the sand today. Sometimes we bear consequences for previous generations' bad choices. For example, in 2 Samuel 21, it talks about how uh, there was a famine in the land of Israel. And the, the king at the time, King David, asked God, why did this famine come to our land? And God revealed to him through his Holy Spirit that this famine was a consequence of the previous king, King Saul, uh, being disobedient to God and what God had told him to do. And so David dealt with that, and the famine went away really interesting david hadn't even done the wrong but he just stopped confessed that made it right made amends where he could and went on this last summer uh we had a sabbatical and uh, there there was right towards the end of it a time where i just stopped and i got away by myself uh, for three or four days and one of the things that the lord laid on my heart to do was to go to the graveside of my grandparents and I, I went and I've got a, a picture of me there uh, with my sabbatical beard. Yeah. And <laughs> and I just stopped at, 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 their, at their graveside. They're, they're gone. They were both Christians. And they both ended their life well. But they both had things in their lives that should not have been there. And I've seen some of those things continue on to the next generation and the next generation, which is me. And I just stopped at this symbolic place. They're gone. They're in heaven with Jesus. I did not talk to them. But I talked to the Lord at that symbolic site. It was a very, you know, that's a poignant site. That's a mile marker site for our family. And I stopped there at that site and I prayed and I took some time, and I just confessed everything to the Lord that I could think of in my family in previous generations. And I drew a line in the sand, and I said, that was them. That was even me to a certain extent, but I draw a line today, and I say, that's not a part of my present or my future yeah, in you. And I just confessed that. I repented of that. Lord, forgive me of my part in that. Forgive them of their part in that. It's, it's too late for them, but I'm just saying, Lord, I just give it all to you. That's basically what I'm doing. And I'm moving on. And I break off any generational curse or any generational anything. I just break it off and say, it stops here. It, it is amazing. In our family, it's, uh, we, we're not that old, but we've been married over 30 years. That's a milestone in our family. That's a change from previous generations. I, I was shocked when I, I was a young man and I learned that my grandpa had been married before. I, I had no idea. Uh, and you could say divorce runs in our family, but I don't. I say divorce ran in our family. Divorce no longer runs in our family. That's done. From this point on, that's done. That's not a part of who we are. So I want to just give you, uh, let's take a moment right now, an opportunity just to repent. So would you stand to your feet? And the sermon's not done. I'm going to come back and come back uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, go ahead and stand to your feet. And bow your heads if you would. And I, I can't see into everyone's heart, but God can. God knows where you are. And before I even go on, uh, I, I know I'm talking to two groups of people. So the first group of people I want to talk to is... Uh, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, possibly for the first time. I, I don't know if you've ever given your life to Jesus before, putting your faith in trust in him to save you and forgive you of your sins. But I want to invite you today to do that. How do you do that? Turn from your sin, 
turn your life over to God and let him lead, come under his authority. So before you can experience all the rest of the freedom I'm going to be talking about today, let's get this right. Let's, let's get saved. Let's get salvation. I want to invite you to become a Christian today. Maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus, or maybe you're coming back to him after wandering away. If that's you today and you're willing to repent of your sins, to ask forgiveness, and to turn away, turn your life over to God and let him lead to become Jesus' apprentice. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? Just raise your hand, and that will, that will be a signal to me to pray for you. Yeah, I'll pray for you. Uh, several. Are there, are there others that would say, this is my day, this is my moment. I'm giving my life to Jesus right now. Good. I want to just lead you in a prayer. Let's do a repeat after me prayer. Just uh, If you raise your hand, would you just say this from your heart to God? And church, let's say, let's say it with him for support. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I give you my life, all of it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And stay standing. Now, for the rest of us, and I, I know most of you, and I know that you're, you're following Jesus and you're, you're believers. So myself and you, let's us take a moment to repent. Uh, what would the Lord bring to your mind right now? What has been a habitual sin? What has been something in your life that's been a stronghold of fear or pride or lust? What, what, what in your life is there that doesn't belong there? Would you take just a moment, ask the Holy Spirit just to shine his light on whatever that is, and then let's repent, okay? So just take a moment by yourself. Lord, I, 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 it's amazing the music that's playing right now, the song we sang earlier. You love us as you find us, but your love's too good to leave us there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. So Lord, those things that you are beginning to, to, to put your finger on in our lives right now, uh, some of us have thought, wow, I had everything dealt with, but then you remind us, oh, but there's this issue. There's this sin, there's this thing. Lord, right now, we confess that to you. Whatever it is that you're, uh, you're, you're putting your finger on, whatever it is that you're highlighting, would you do that in, in your own words just quietly to the Lord? We confess that to you. We take ownership. If we've, if we've made choices, we don't blame it on anyone else. We take ownership. Lord, I did this. Or, Lord, I allowed this in my life. I confess that to you. I ask you to forgive me. Then Lord, I pray that you would help us to walk the other direction now. Help us to walk toward you and away from that. Lord, I pray that that thing, those things that we're confessing would no longer define our lives. They wouldn't even describe our lives. But that our lives would be defined by Jesus and your word and that would describe our lives. So Lord, we, t we, we turn our back on sinful practices. We turn our back on strongholds. We turn our back on those things, uh, demonic activity in our lives, demonization. We turn our back on all of that and we repent and we turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I said earlier, we don't just repent for immediate relief. So sometimes when we're feeling guilty, we say, Lord, please forgive me of that so that we feel better in that moment. But then we go right back and our intention is just to keep doing that. That's not, that's not true repentance. So another positive step would be to surrender to the Lord now and for the long haul. Submit to him, humble yourself under almighty God's hand. Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke tells this story about a man named Bob. 
and Bob owned a two-story, 10-room house. One day, there was a knock on the door, and Bob opened the door, and there was Jesus at his door. And Bob invited him in. This is, this is so great. Jesus is here. So Bob did the honorable thing. He gave him the best room in the house. He gave him the master bedroom to stay in. And so uh, life went on. Uh, the next morning, uh, they got up, and, and there was a knock at the door. Bob answered the door, and the devil was there at the door. And immediately, the devil put his arms around that door and it tried to get his toe in the door. And Bob had to struggle and fight for a long time, saying, you're not welcome here. Get out. I don't want you here. And then finally, he prevailed, got that door shut and locked. Whew. Jesus came down for breakfast. And, and Bob said, why didn't you help me with, uh, when the, fight against the devil? And Jesus said, well, I'm, I'm just a guest here. That, that's not my responsibility. And Bob went, oh, I get it, aha moments. I need to give you more of my house. So he said, oh, Jesus, from this moment on, I give you the whole upper floor. Five rooms are yours. And this is gonna be so great. He, Bob thought, wow, I just really did a great thing. The day went on, they went to bed. Next morning he gets up, there's a knock on the door. It's the devil again. Bob opens the door, it's the devil. The devil is pushing his way in. He's shouting accusations. He's bringing temptations against him. And Bob is wrestling so hard and shoving with all his might and, and just trying to think of everything he can to get the devil out. And he pushes him out, he prevails. Whew. This time, Bob goes running up to Jesus' room and knocks on the door and says, hey, why did you leave me all alone when I, I had to fight with the devil all by myself? And Jesus said, well, I don't own this house. I'm just a guest here. It's not my responsibility to open the door or to deal with visitors. It's your responsibility. Again, Bob has an aha moment. Oh. Bob takes out the key. And he said, I gave you my house. It's not my house anymore. It's your house, Jesus. And then, and then Bob says, Jesus, what room would you like me to stay in? Jesus said, the best bedroom, the master bedroom. Bob went to bed. Next morning, there's a knock on the door. It's the devil. Bob gets up just like always. He's going to start, go uh, answer the door. Jesus says, no, no, I'll get it. That's not your responsibility. It's not your house. I'll open the door. Jesus opens the door. It's a devil. The devil sees Jesus. He goes, oh, sorry, sir, wrong house. Yeah. And leaves. Yeah. I read that story this week, and I got down on my knees. And I repented, and I gave Jesus the keys to my life, to my bank account, to my bills, to my wife, to my kids, my house, my cars, my church, my city, my country, my world, my health. I gave Jesus the keys to everything. And I cannot tell you the difference that made in me. And all of a sudden, I'm not stressed or worried because it's not my worry. Our church, it's not my worry. It's the Lord's worry and I am his servant. What do you want me to do with your church, Lord? I will obey and do it. It's your church. It's your bank account, Lord. These are your medical bills. They're yours. How would you like to handle it, Lord? in humility and not sarcasm. How would you like to handle it? Because I've, I've been making plans in all of those areas of how I'm gonna handle it, my backup plans, but I just stopped to say, but wait a minute, the keys are yours. I signed off the title of my car, it's yours. How would you like to handle it, Lord, with your car? That's submitting to the Lord's authority. I'd like to pray one more time. Would you bow your heads with me? And I wanna invite you to submit to the Lordship of Jesus. 
go, uh, if, if you would like to do this, if you would like to submit everything, then I'm gonna ask you to not leave any room untouched. Surrender your bank account, your church, your family, your job, your school, your grades, your identity. Surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come under his authority and say to him, Lord, I give it to you. What would you like to do with it? I surrender. Would you take just a moment in your own words with the Lord and surrender to the Lord? repented of wrong things but now we surrender everything the good the bad and the ugly we surrender everything we have to you Lord we surrender our, our possessions our people our church our our work our school our identity we surrender everything to you it's yours Lord so from this moment on Lord, we're going to ask you in a new way, what is your will regarding this? We're going to look in your word, and your word tells us a lot of what your will is. So we're going to start there, and we're going to say, ah, your will is this, Lord. Okay, I'm going to do that. Other things that we don't know clearly from your word, we're going to stop, and we're going to pray, and we're going to ask your Holy Spirit to show us what is your will, and we're going to obey. We submit those things to you. I'm yours. I'm the guest, not you. You're, you're not the add-on in my life. You're the, the core, the center of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So all of that is what I call to repent. Repent and submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then receive. Receive the Holy Spirit receive God's help in your life. If you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want to encourage you to seek that. Seek that experience. Seek that person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. We want that power, power to live. I want to be empowered. I want to see you empowered. Now, I'm not going to teach much on this today because a few weeks ago, I spent three Sundays teaching about that. And perhaps some of you at that time where were you started seeking the Holy Spirit, but you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, I want to just challenge you again today. This is part of being empowered. Seek, seek the Lord and all he has for you and say, Lord, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Let's stop and let's pray for a minute. Lord, for those who are seeking, Lord, you said how much more will our Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him for it? So, Lord, we are asking you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit for those who have not yet been. For those of us who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that you would refill us today. Paul said to be filled and filled, continually filled with the Spirit in worship and in fellowship. Lord, help us, Lord, to be refilled today to overflowing, that we would be empowered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So repent and receive and then resist, okay? So part, part of the resisting, and actually the R is renounce. Renounce. Renounce all connections, cooperations, and open doors to the enemy's work in your life. What does it mean to renounce? I love the dictionary definition of it. To renounce is to give up or reject something voluntarily by formal declaration. That is so good because that is exactly what we want to do regarding the devil's work in our lives. Renounce, give up or reject voluntarily by formal declaration. So break off curses, reject lies, refuse to cooperate any longer with the enemy in your life. Paul wrote to Titus in chapter two, uh, it's written down, turn from godless living and sinless pleasures. 
in, in the Amplified, it says it this way, for the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward or appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. The grace of God has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness. This is the other thing I did at the graveside last summer, is I just renounced that and said, that is no longer, I reject that in my life. I declare, I reject those things, those sins in my life going forward. So part of renouncing is a, a prayer for deliverance. And, and uh, today we're gonna just do this a little bit differently than we had planned originally. Uh, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, there's not a formula. What matters is that there's a prayer for deliverance. So uh, in James 5, it talks about calling for the elders of the church. And after the service is all over today, if you would like one-on-one -on -one prayer for deliverance, uh, I, I, I've asked a few people to be available up front uh, and we'll, we'll pray for you. Uh, but whether it's your prayer, if you're a believer, your prayer is just as effective. There is just something powerful about having another person stand with you. But the, the point is that you pray because no matter what, the power for deliverance is from God. It's God who delivers. He is the deliverer. The battle is the Lord's. So it, uh, we're, we're gonna pray in a few minutes for uh, just a prayer of renunciation and rejecting the, the enemy in our lives. But let's believe that he will. In 1 John 5, verses 14 to 15, it says this, and we are confident that he, Jesus, hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Okay, now this is for somebody today. This is Bible. We are confident that, when, that Jesus hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. So let me ask you this. Would freedom from the enemy's work in your life please Jesus? Yes. Would it? Yes. Would freedom from the enemy's work in your life please Jesus? Yes. yes. About 10 of you are fully convinced. Yes. Would freedom from the enemy's work in your life please Jesus? Yes. Yes, I hope you can be confident in that. You guys, we gotta be confident in something. Yeah. Let's be confident that God wants you free. Yeah. Freedom, deliverance is the children's bread. Jesus taught us in the, in the one prayer he taught us to pray as disciples, he's, he taught us to pray for freedom, for deliverance. That is God's will, I declare it. I am not waffling about that. I'm not wondering if it's his will. It is his will for you to be freed up from the enemy's work in your life. So then it goes on in verse 15 to say, and since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he might possibly consider sort of what, no, he will give us what we ask for. That is Bible. That's not name and claim it. That is not prosperity. That is Bible. That is God's word that when you ask for anything that pleases him, he hears us and he, we know he will give us what we ask for. So when we pray a prayer of deliverance in accordance with God's will, you are delivered, period. He will do it. This is such a clear biblical promise. In Jesus' name, we're going to bind and cast out any evil spirits that have demonized you. They cannot possess you as a Christian, but you can have opened a door to them and allowed them into your life. And we would call that demonization. In Matthew 8, 16, it says about Jesus, he cast out the evil spirits with a simple command and he healed all the sick. I just picture that it was not this big theatrical production. Jesus said, get out, and the demon left. Done, that's it. And I'm gonna talk about what to do after that in your life to close the doors a little bit later. Luke 10, 17, the, Jesus sent out 72 disciples. It wasn't just his inner core. It was 72 people who were following Jesus. He sent them out and he says, go do my work. They came back, they joyfully reported, reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. This is before Pentecost. Oh my goodness, 
we are so much more empowered, so much more aware of God's word. It's all, they didn't even have the New Testament written down yet. Like we, we, are, we are prepared, we are ready, we are his disciples and the demons are gonna obey us when we use Jesus' name. Amen. When we act in G, the way Jesus directs through his spirit in Jesus' name. And remember from our message last week, we fight from victory. We don't fight for victory. Jesus has won the victory on the cross. He has nailed all our sins to the cross and canceled the written uh, notice of our sins. He's canceled that on the cross. Jesus won the victory. Overwhelming victory is ours. So in Jesus' name, we tear down strongholds and mindsets that oppose God. In 2 Corinthians 10, Paul wrote this, we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So we're gonna pray and we're gonna get with it. I wanna invite you to stand right where you are and let's pray and let's agree with God's word. We've repented. We've submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We've prayed that the Holy Spirit would fill us and baptize us, and many of us are already filled. We, we have done those things in preparation. And so now we're gonna pray a prayer of renunciation, of renouncing. And so would you just begin to pray? Maybe the Lord has already brought to mind some things from your family or some chronic issues you're facing yourself. And let, let's begin to pray. I'm gonna pray over you. But what you pray also, your prayer uh, as a righteous person is powerful and effective. Would you pray? And let's, let's begin to say things like, Lord, I renounce, fill in the blank, in my life. I renounce it. I break off any generational curses, any curses that, that uh, people have spoken over me. Uh, that, that time when a parent said that uh, you are evil and you're never going to amount to anything. That curse that, that tried to land on me, I renounce that. I am not an evil person. I am a child of God. I declare it in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, as I pray for our congregation and even for those who might be listening online, at right now, in Jesus' name, we renounce any work of the enemy in our lives. We close any door to the enemy that we have opened in our life. Those times when we have lied or stolen or, or, or uh, sinned or lusted or committed adultery, those things that we have done in our lives that opened a door, we close those doors right now in Jesus' name. We renounce any connection to the enemy, to the devil in our lives. We renounce it. We renounce addictions. We renounce lust. We renounce pride. We renounce fear. We renounce those things. We reject those things with a formal declaration. And we say right now, I reject that fear in Jesus' name. And I just speak over to you. And I, I speak to the enemy that I know wants to, has, has attached himself to, to lives of people in this room. So right now, in Jesus' name, I speak to the enemy. Loose him. Loose her. Get out in Jesus' name. Enemy, you have no authority here. In Jesus' name, I command you to leave. In Jesus' name, spirit of fear, leave this place. Leave my brother. Leave my sister. In Jesus' name, spirit of lust, you are broken right now. Your assignment is canceled right now. In Jesus' name, spirit of lust, get out of here. Spirit of pride, religious spirit, get out of this place. You do not belong in my brother and my sister. In Jesus' name, I speak to a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of sickness, a spirit of weakness. Get out in Jesus' name. Let my brother go. Let my sister go. I cancel your assignment on my brother. And I just speak over each brother, each sister in this room right now. Be free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. God says, let my people go that they may be free to worship me. Hallelujah. And Lord, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you for your, your deliverance, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus.
to challenge you right now. We have just prayed a prayer of deliverance uh, over every single one of you. You've been praying, many of you, I've been praying. 1 John 5 says, when you ask something in accordance with what pleases Him, He hears you and He will do it. So let's say, right now, let's say, let's declare, I am free. I am free. Would you declare that out loud? I am free. I am free. I am free. Not because uh, I got all yelling. That, that's not why. It's because the deliverer is here and we asked him and we commanded evil spirits to leave. This morning, the devil just tried to plant this little thought in my, in my head. Well, you're not powerful enough. And I, I read again Ephesians 6 and I saw who was powerful enough. And I remembered that it's not my power anyway. And that God's word says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. So it never was my preaching or my yelling to begin with. It's the fact that Jesus Christ has all authority in heaven and earth over the demons that have come against you and me in our lives. And so when we said, get out, is in his authority, in his name. We are executing his will. We wrote his name on the check because he told us to. You are free. You are free. Now here's the things we've said, repent, receive, renounce. Finally, you gotta replace. You gotta replace. You cannot just sweep the house clean. It's gotta be filled with something. So replace your old thoughts and habits. Proactively renew your mind. Uh, filling it with God's word. Uh, I, this week, <clears throat> I started, I, I took a, a pad of paper and I have a goal to write this phrase a thousand times. God will supply all our needs from his glorious riches. I've written it 105 times so far. Got about 900 more. Because I want what God's word says uh, from Philippians to be in my mind more than what my circumstance says. All right, so I'm replacing old thoughts with God's word. I'm renewing my mind, like it says in Romans 12, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Replace your old habits. In Ephesians 4, 22, it's, the 32, it says, throw off your old sinful nature. You gotta do something. Yeah. So the, the devil, we, we, we cast him out. We said, get out of here, leave. But you gotta throw off your old sinful nature, your former way of life. Don't keep living that way. Don't reach for that thing on the internet. Don't reach for that substance. Don't, don't do that and expect the door to stay closed because you're just opening the door again. So, you, so he's gone. You are free. Now throw off your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created by God, truly righteous and holy. And he goes on the next like 10 verses. He says, replace all your old habits with the opposite. So he says, if you used to steal, work hard and be generous. <clears throat> Stealing is taking. Generosity is giving. You see what I mean? So, so go the opposite way. <clears throat> you have a role to play in this. You have a part to play in this. Yeah, don't use foul language. Instead, use encouraging words. Like something's got to change. Reach for something new. Let God renew you. Choose purity instead of lust. Choose it right now. Choose how does a free person work? How does a, how does a free person look at his phone? How does a free person uh, look at her computer? How does a free person look at this magazine? How does a free person choose television shows and movies? So begin right now, right now in this atmosphere. Begin to think, okay, I'm going to do something different because I'm not going to open up that door anymore. Right. Choose faith instead of fear. Wholeness instead of sickness. Humility instead of pride. Keep resisting the devil and he will flee from you. It needs to be more than just this moment. This moment was awesome. But you got to keep resisting. Keep submitting to his Lord's authority. Keep resisting the devil and he will flee from you. And I want you to know from experience, you may have a season, short or long, where you go, wow. I have zero temptation in that area. I've always had temptation in that area. I have, I have zero. This is amazing. Wow, I really am free. This is so awesome. And then out of the blue, a week later, a day later, two months later, all of a sudden a temptation comes up and you go, whoa, what, what happened? You're going to be tempted. I'm warning you. You're going to be tempted to say, I guess I'm not free. You may have just been, felt totally unprepared and you actually fell like you actually take that 
temptation and run with it. This is what you got to do. Get back up. Submit to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Resist the devil and declare, oh no, I am free. I am free. I am moving forward. Here's what happened. When, when Israel came out of Egypt, they were free, right? Woo, hallelujah, I'm free. Moses let them out. I'm free, I'm free. And then what happened? The enemy came back saying to them, you're not free, you're not free. Were they free? Yes! It just didn't feel like that in that moment. And they freaked out. But the truth was they were free. God brought them out. They just had to keep walking forward through the Red Sea. That's what we're going to do. We're keep walking forward in faith. Amen? Yeah. Proverbs 24, 16 says, The godly me trip seven times, but they will get up again. Right. So even if you trip, don't agree with the enemy. Don't start saying, I guess I'm in bondage. Say, wait a minute. That doesn't fit anymore. I'm free. I'm moving forward. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. I love this quote from Pastor Savchuk. Don't choose to live in what you fell into. When a sheep falls into the mud, it starts crying. When a pig falls in the mud, it plays in it. You're a sheep, not a pig. Amen? Amen. Lord, I just thank you so much for you, for your word. Lord God, we've got a lot of word in us today. Lord, we have, we have repented. We have received your spirit. We have renounced the enemy, Lord, and we're beginning to replace our former way of life with a new way of life. Lord, I pray that you would come in, that you would transform us by changing the way we think, that we would then know your good, beautiful, peaceful, wonderful will and walk in it, Lord God. And Lord, I just declare, we are free. And we worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name.